Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the third and final session of this three part series uh, webinar. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the out of box experience of the Yalink Teams Room devices. So we'll look at not only the Windows based um, devices, but we'll also look at the Android based devices and even have a quick look at the meeting board as well. For those that don't know me, my name is Scott Young and I'm the Manager of Products and Services here at Allo Computer Products. Um, what we're going to do today is run through a quick look at what we need to do on the Office 365 side to set up our room resource accounts for our Microsoft Teams rooms. We'll look at um, what license to select. If you guys were on the previous session, we did cover this, but I'll quickly just run through those options again in, um, you know, compared to using the basic or the pro license. We'll have a look at what comes in the Airlink kits, how we connect our equipment together, a uh, run through of the configuration options on the Teams rooms, and then we'll quick go for actually a quick live demo of the advanced device configuration. It was probably a bit easier than putting it into a PowerPoint deck. I'll actually do a live presentation for that part, and then we'll finish with a Q&A session. Now, guys, if you do have any questions throughout the um, presentation, feel free to add it into the chat or um, the Q&A panel. Um, and we'll get to it as quickly as possible. Horace um, from Alloy is also on the line, so he'll be able to help out with questions throughout the presentation. And if you do want to ask a, a question, um, raise your hand. Happy to unmute you and let you um, fire those questions away. All right, so what we're going to do quickly is just run through what is needed in um, in terms of the Office 365 side of the deployment for a Microsoft Teams Rooms. So when we're looking at deploying a Teams Room solution, what we need to do is make sure that we're creating the correct or using also the correct account on Office 365. So what we need to do is we need to utilize the room resource account in Office 365 when we're creating these users for um, Microsoft Teams room devices. One thing to mention here is make sure we are using a room resource account. Do not use a standard user account. Do not use E3, E5 licensing, things like that. You need to make sure you're using the correct account. Now, the first thing we need to do is we sign into our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and we then go to the um, Rooms and Equipment section. Now, from here, this is where we can create our Room Resource account. What we'll need to do is when we click on that Add Resource, we need to select what type of resource we'll be um, configuring for this user. So the first thing we'll need to do is select and make sure that we do select the room resource type. We'll then give that room resource a name. We'll give it an email address. And what we can also do here is add some advanced options like the capacity of the room. Um, this can be important for additional devices later on in the room. So for some of the devices that Yalink have, we can actually count what people are in the room. So for OHS and you know in these COVID times, what we can do is make sure that we're not um, filling the room up um, beyond capacity. So we can say that let's just say we're setting up a medium size um, boardroom, capacity is 10 people. What we can do with these additional devices, including the team's room panel, um, the camera, and also the um, the sensor, room sensor. We can actually count how many people are in the room and display that capacity on the outside of the scheduling panel to make sure that we're not um, filling that room up too much. And then we can also give it a location and a phone number as well. So filling those details, once we've filled in those details, there are some advanced um, booking options available with the room resource account. 
by default, the allow repeating meetings, automatically decline meetings outside of limits, and also the auto accept meeting requests are enabled by default with those default kind of um, booking options. Now, one thing we need to make sure we do is we need to make sure that that auto accept meeting request is enabled. So if it's not enabled, just imagine if, if we're gonna, we want to schedule a meeting inside one of those um, meeting room spaces, if we're not auto accept, accepting those meetings, if we send a meeting request to that room resource and it doesn't accept the meeting, then we have to manually go in and actually accept meetings for or on behalf of that room. So make sure we do have that enabled. All right, once we've kind of configured the, that initial room resource, we've, um, we've configured those additional options. What happens is once we create that room resource account, it doesn't actually set a password on the device. So when we, um, obviously when we sign into our Teams Rooms account, we need to, you know, the option there is we need to, we need to use a password. So if we don't configure a password, there's no way to enter that password or know what that password is when we're configuring our team's rooms equipment. So the best way to do that is go back to the active users section. So once we've created that room resource account under the rooms and equipment section, it also creates a user in Office 365. So that's why we go back to the active users section, go and find the room resource that we just created, and we then need to um, click on the options to add or to reset the password. So we can do that just by hovering over the user and clicking on the key that appears next to the user, or we can tick the box next to, to the left of the, of the user that we've created, and it will bring up um, a few different options on the right-hand side. So from there, we can create a password. We can select to automatically let Office 365 create a password, or we can enter a password ourselves. Once we've created the password, what we need to do then is we need to assign a license for that room resource account. So once we've created that room resource account, we've then set a password for that room resource account. Before we can actually utilize that account, we need to make sure it's licensed. So as we know, we Microsoft have recently changed the licensing licensing options for Teams Rooms. So now we have the Teams Room Basic and the Teams Room Pro. Now the Teams Room Basic is a free license and the Teams Room Pro is a paid for license. Depending on your requirements, which I'll get to in a second, this is where we select what license type. Now majority of the time, if it's going to be a room, um, a room account that's being utilized by an organization, we should be using a pro license. All right, let's just quickly cover off kind of the differences between the Teams Room Basic and Pro. So first of all, Basic is free, free of charge, no payment required to use a Basic license by default. Most organizations that are um, set up in Office 365 will have the ability to access 25 of these basic license. And then there's a pro license as well, um, which is at a charge. And it's around about the same price, a monthly price as a majority of the competitors out there on the market as well. All right, now how do we decide whether we want to use a basic license or we want to use a pro license? So some of the pro features that are available for Teams Room systems enable some of the advanced kind of functionality of a Teams Room. Now, one of the very basic functionalities that is missing from a, um, from a basic license is actually dual screen support. So if you are setting up a room and you are using dual screens on your system, you need to go for a pro license. Now, some of the ad additional um, kind of differences here, scheduling panels. If you're using scheduling panels outside of your room, we need to make sure we're using a pro license. These are not available on a basic license. Uh, whiteboarding functionality, so using content cameras for the team's magic whiteboard feature, that's also not available on the basic license. You would need to go for pro um, to enable that. 
And then we've also got some um, of the advanced kind of engagement options through um, Teams Room. So front row and things like that, some of the, the um, features there that enhance the experience of your meeting and not available in the basic license either. And then also um, intelligent audio and video um, support is also pro only. So for example, the M speech that's available with some of the kits from Yealink, it supports transcribing and Cortana. So some of those advanced AI features are not available through the basic license. You would need to go to a pro license. So once we've configured that uh, resource account in Office 365, we've assigned a password, we've, um, we've attached the correct license that we're gonna use, it's now time to kind of um, open the box and, and, and have a look at what's um, what comes with the Yelling kit. Now, one thing to mention, the reason I kind of touched through this first is because depending on Microsoft, sometimes when you create users and you assign a licenses, it can take up to 24 hour, hours for that license and that user to activate. Now, I've actually never said it take 24 hours, but that does stipulate in some of the documentation from Microsoft that it can take up to 24 hours. So it's best to make sure that those accounts are set up early, ready to go when you're about to deploy these room systems. Now I've also, um, after this session, these um, this presentation and recording will be available on our website. So I've added the link there um, for additional information on the differences between the basic and pro license. All right, what's in the box? One great thing about Yealink is when you buy a Teams room kit, whether it's Android, whether it's Windows, whether it's a meeting board, everything that you need to do, I'll say a kind of basic or generic installation is available with the Yealink kit. Now, when I say basic or generic, they do supply cables, but obviously the cables that they supply may not always be the right length. So you may need to use additional cables when you're installing this kit. But out of the box, you are going to be able to set up your kit with nothing else required. Now, on this slide here, I'm showing you the contents of kind of a basic, um, well, not a basic, but a, a one of the room kits that are available from, from Yealink. I'm not gonna go through every single component, but what I kind of want to highlight here is that everything that you need to install your system is going to be provided by Yealink. So for instance, with the, the, um, the PC, so the M-Core Pro from Yealink, you get your two HDMI cables to, get, to connect to your TV. You get a wall mount bracket or a under table bracket. You get the power adapter, you get screws, you get a screwdriver. So everything you need to mount that M-Core is provided. With the M-Touch panel, you get your wall mount option. So majority of the time with, with um, other vendors, if you want to wall mount your devices, it's an additional cost that you need to, to or for your customer to, to fork out just to install that touch panel onto a wall. So again, all the peripherals, all the items that you need to mount or install these devices come with the kit. Same with the M speaker, you get your wall mount bracket included with the unit. You get your 3.5 mil audio cable if that's the way you're gonna connect it. Um, you get your power adapter if you, if you need to use the power adapter. Same with the, the VCM34 wired mic, you get your ethernet cable that you need to connect the VCM34 to your Yaolink kit. And then with the cameras, the UVC84, the 86, you get your remote control, you get your wall mounting bracket, you get your ethernet cable. Everything that you need to install these devices comes with the kit. Now there's obviously a few other items here that I haven't touched on. You know, if you went for the UVC40 um, camera, again, you still get all the, the equipment that you need to install these, uh, these devices. Okay, same with the Android-based devices. Everything you need is included with the kit. Now, as you're probably aware, the Android devices come in different flavors. So you, um, you know, it might be the A10, A20, or A30 Android bar, but then 
it might also be a kit with a, only a remote control, or it might be with the CTP-18, might be with the VCH-51, might be with the WPP-30. So I've just kind of added all these um, options here on the screen for you. As you can see, with that Android bar, you get your power adapter, you get your HDMI cables, you get your Ethernet cable, you get your wall mounting bracket. Everything that you need comes in the kit. Same again for the CTP-18. Comes with the wall mounting bracket. Um, it comes with your Ethernet cables. Everything that you need to install, it comes with it. And then even the VCH-51 um, content sharing box or bio box comes with the HDMI cable, comes with the USB-C cable. Everything you need is included. Now, one thing to mention as well, which has kind of come up a little bit lately, the original WPP-20 was USB-A only. But for probably the last kind of three to six months, all of the WPP-20 devices that are shipping now come with a USB-A to USB-C adapter. As we know, more and more laptops out there in the market are only using USB-C these days. So that's now included free of charge as well. All right, just quickly with the meeting board. So the meeting board is an all-in-one device. So not a lot of peripherals that you need to, to, um, to go along with this device to get it up and running. But one thing to mention, again, everything that you need to install this device comes with it. It comes included with a wall mount bracket. It comes with all the screws to screw that bracket to the wall. It comes with your power cables, your network cables. Again, everything you need is included in that kit. Obviously, with the meeting board, there is an optional trolley that is available for that. That is purchased separately and does not come with the kit. All right, now that we've kind of touched on what's included in the boxes, let's have a look at now how the Yaling kits kind of connect together. How do we piece all of these um, items together and get this kit set up and, and working as we need to? Okay, so one thing with the, the Yaling products, talking about the Windows-based systems first, the two core components of these systems is the M-Core Pro, which is your PC running Windows 10 Enterprise IoT, and also the Teams Room application, and also the M-Core Touch Panel, sorry, the M-Touch Touch Panel. So these two are the main core components of a Teams Room on Windows system. After we have these two peripherals, we can then mix and match and add what camera and what audio equipment we want to use with that kit. So, for example, looking at the MVC 940, 960 kits um, that are available. Okay, in this kit, we get our we get our M Core, we get our M Touch, we get the AV Hub, which is used to um, connect our multiple camera solutions to the kit and also used to connect our audio devices depending on what we um, we choose there. So the way that this connects, so directly from the M core, there is a CAT5 or a CAT6 cable that connects directly from the M touch port on the M core pro to the M touch panel that sits on your table. That's a direct ethernet cable connection. So that's a cable that's gonna have to run front of room to the boardroom table. Normally, probably nine times out of 10, the M core is installed behind one of your displays. Some people do choose to put it underneath the table, but nine times out of 10, it is installed behind the display. And the main reason for that is if you install it under your table, you then have to run HDMI cables and things back from table to your displays. So the easiest way to do this is install it and mount it behind the display. Then it's only a single cat cable from front of room to your boardroom table. Now on the M-Core Pro, we have up to three HDMI ports. Now, one thing to mention with this, with the Windows kit, sorry, the Teams room kit, Teams only supports two displays. The third display there is for Zoom. Zoom does support three displays, Teams only supports two displays. That may change in the future. So we are going to have um, added that third HDMI for future proofing. 
So we've connected our displays. We've got our power adapter that's also connected to the M core. We connect our um, PAT cable from our wall point or something for our corporate network. So we connect it to our corporate network. And then from that M core, we have a USB connection from the M core to our AV hub. Now, one thing that happens quite a lot on the AV hub, it has a USB 3 port. However, it doesn't actually use USB 3. It only uses USB 2. Please use the USB cable that is supplied with the kit. If you can't, because it's not long enough for your installation, make sure you're using USB 2. If you use USB 3, when you um, connect it to Windows, Windows will not detect that device. If you look in Device Manager, it'll um, it'll come up as an unrecognized device. If you see that, the problem is going to be you're using USB 3 instead of USB 2. All right, so on the AV Hub itself, we have seven ports, Ethernet ports, available for connectivity to cameras and audio devices. Now, seven of those ports support PoE. So our cameras, the UVC 84, 86, our M speaker, our wired mics, so VCM 34, uh, VCM 38, are all PoE powered. So the AV Hub can actually power these peripherals for us. Now, one thing to mention, the AV Hub has a maximum power draw of 100 watts. I don't have the listing right here off the top of my head for what each component does draw, but there is a table available um, that does outline the power draw for each peripheral. So if you are connecting multiple cameras, multiple speakers and mics, and you find that some are not powering on, that'll be the reason. Now, if that's the case, what we can do is we can connect a third party PoE switch to one of the AV hub ports, and then we can add the additional um, audio or camera devices into that PoE switch. So as we can see from the diagram, our CAT cables out to our UVC 84s, 86s, to our M speakers, and also to our VCM 34s and 38s. Now on the AV hub, there are also RCA ports in and out that we can use to connect to um, third-party amplifiers and things like that as well. Now, if we are using a BIOD extender with an MVC9 series product, where we're using the AV hub, the BIOD extender will connect to one of the ethernet ports on the AV hub. And then from that touch panel that sits on the boardroom table, we have our HDMI and slash USB-C cable that will connect to our PC for content share. All right, moving on to the eight series. So again, very similar to that nine series product, but this time we don't have the AV hub. So instead of that USB connection from M core to AV hub, this time we've got our USB connection from M core to our camera, whether it's the UVC 84 or whether it's the UVC 86. Now, what we can also do, so on the back of these cameras, there's a VCH port, that's an ethernet port. So that we can use, um, we can then connect to a PoE switch and we can then connect our uh, speakers and mics via that ethernet port. Now, if you were using um, a single wired mic, so for instance, the VCM34, just looking at that picture on the left, so we can we can daisy chain the, UC, uh, the VCM34s via a single um, cap cable out of the back of the camera, and we can use our 3.5 mil audio cable to connect to the M speaker too. Now, if we don't wanna do that, or whether we're running VCM38 ceiling mics, we can then throw a PoE switch into the mix there and connect via Ethernet to the PoE switch from the UVC 84 or 86, and then connect our audio peripherals via Ethernet. All right, moving on to the MVC 6 series. So again, all the same kind of connectivity, M core directly to the M touch, USB to the camera, but this time with this connection, we're utilizing the M speech. Now, one great thing about this, we still have our single 
cat cable from front of the room on the M core to the M touch 2. Now, because the M speech is a USB connected device, we don't want to have to try and run a USB extender or cable from that boardroom table to front of room as well to connect to the M core. So the great thing about it is on the M touch panel on the inside, um, uh, beneath the inside cover, there is a USB A port. That USB A port can be used to connect our M speech. Now, one of the reasons that that works is because that CAT connection from the M Core Pro to the M Touch 2, even though we're utilizing an Ethernet cable, it's actually an emulated USB connection over that CAT cable. So that's why we're able to connect a USB peripheral to that M Touch panel, and it can still be recognized by Windows. Now, one thing to mention here the M Touch 2 has two USB A ports one underneath the panel and also one on the side. The one on the side is purely used for pairing the WPP20 wireless presentation um, dongle. It's, you cannot connect a USB device to that port. It has to be a USB port underneath the M-Touch 2. Now moving to the right hand image, same again, but this time we're utilizing wireless mics. So these are the decked CPW90 um, wireless mics. So this time what we need to do is with the CPW90 kit, it comes with what they call the DD10K, which is a decked dongle. Now, because we are using deck technology, we can't just connect the CPW90 directly to that um, UVC 84 or 86 because it doesn't have a depth kind of access point built into that camera. So we need to utilize that deck dongle. Now, another mistake that I see over and over again is people connect that deck dongle to the M Core Pro. That's not the way it should be done. It needs to be connected to the camera. Now, if we were replacing those CPW90s and using the VCM36-Ws, this is a different story. So the VCM36-Ws, they use Wi-Fi technology, not DECT. Now, the UVC84, the UVC86, and even the AV Hub all have a built-in wireless access point. So we can actually pair that VCM36 directly to that device. So no dongle is actually required. All right, now before we move on to the A30, one thing I just want to kind of recap here is that as you can see from those last kind of few slides and the diagrams that we can see on the screen, all of the audio devices in Galen kits connect via the camera. The camera is the device that has all of the echo cancellation and the smarts for the audio as well. It's then a single USB connection from the camera or the AV hub back to the M core. And Windows then detects that same device for our speaker, our mic, and also our, our camera. So just keep that in mind when you are um, installing these, these kits. Now on the bottom of all of these slides as well, I have linked back to the Yaling support page. And this is kind of to the quick start guide um, for these MVC kits that also gives you a bit more detail on how they connect and what's included in the box and also mounting options as well for a lot of these devices. All right, so moving on to the A30 um, Android bars. Now, when it comes to installation for an MTR device, it can't get much quicker and easier than an Android bar. They're an all-in-one device. There's no additional microphones and speakers needed, even though they can be supported, but not needed to get up and running initially. So on the back of the A30 bar, we've got our power connection. We've got our VC hub or phone port, which can be used to connect um, additional microphones or also our um, VCH51 content sharing box. On the A30, we've also got a line in and line out. Now, at the moment, if you utilize the line in or the line out, it's going to disable 
the mic or the speaker in the A30. So you're only using one or the other. We've also got two HDMI ports and we've got our, um, our internet port for our connection to the corporate network. Now, one thing to mention, if you are using a single display, make sure you connect HDMI to HDMI 1. If you connect to HDMI 2, it will throw an error on the screen and tell you to connect it to HDMI 1. Now, with these kits, as an optional item or depending on the kit that you purchase, we also have the CTP-18. So the CTP-18 is just connected directly to your corporate network. So unlike the Windows-based solutions, where our M Touch 2 connects directly to the M core with the Android devices, these two devices connect to the network um, themselves and then the two devices pair to each other across the network. So in this example on the right hand side, it's using a PoE injector um, because the CTP18 is PoE powered, but we can just use a PoE switch um, as well for this. All right, moving on to the A20, again, very similar to the A30, but this time there's no line in, line out port. We've got our two HDMI ports, we've got our power adapter, we've got our VC hub or phone port for connectivity to external mics, um, and we've also got our um, connection to our corporate network via the internet port. And then again for that CTP18. So very similar to the A30. All right, so the A10, the, the newest Android bar um, available from Yalen, this one's a little bit different. So with this one, again, we still need our power adapter. We've got our Ethernet cable for connection to the corporate network. The A10 only supports a single display. So we've got our HDMI port for connection to our display. We've got a USB-C port. Now, the USB-C port can be used to connect to your PC to um, be utilized for content sharing. And later on down the track, it will also support BIOD via USB-C as well. We have VCH port again to connect to our external mics. Um, we have another USB-A port that we use for pairing um, WPP20 or WPP30 um, dongles, content sharing and BIOD dongles. And then with the A10, we have the line in and line out ports. And then again, we have that same connection via the CTP-18. All right, so just quickly touching on the BIOS connection for these devices. So with the A20 and the A30, the way that we can utilize our BIOS connection for these peripherals is via the VCH-51. So the VCH51 will connect to that VC hub or VCH port on the back of the A20 or the A30. Now, what happens if we're using an external mic with these devices? We've got a VCM38 connected to, to the A20 or the A30, and it also needs to connect to that same VCH port or VC port on the back of the A20, A30. Simple, we add a PoE switch. So we just add a PoE switch to the back of that port. We connect the A20 or A30 to a PoE switch, our mic to the PoE switch, and also our VCH51 to the PoE switch as well. Now with the Android-based devices, to enable BIOD mode, it's a single USB-C connection to our laptop. Now, if our laptop does not have a USB-C port or our USB-C port does not support video pass-through, there's also a USB-A and a HDMI port on the VCH51 that we can connect to older laptops with. All right, looking at the uh, Windows-based devices and how we connect BIOD to these systems. Now, the BIOD device that we use for the Windows systems is different to the Android. The Android, we use the VCH51. With the Windows-based systems, we're using MVC BIOD extender. Now, in this case, it's the same connection. So it's an Ethernet run or an Ethernet cable back to either the VCH port on the back of the unit or the VC hub port, whatever it's labeled with. And that's how we connect that BIOD extender. 
Now, if again, same as the Android bars, if we're using um, additional wired mics and speakers, then all we need to do is add a PoE switch and then we connect that wire extender to the PoE switch. Now, with the Windows-based systems, when we need to connect the wire extender to our PC, this is actually a two cable connection. So the MVC wire extender, what that's doing is we connect that via USB-A to our PC, and that's giving us connection to the peripherals. It's giving us connection to our camera, our mic, and our speaker. Now, what it's not doing is it's not throwing our um, laptop's display up to the room display. So to do that, we need to connect our, um, our laptop to either the HDMI port or the USB-C port on the M-Touch 2. Or we could use WP20 to do that as well. So we could have the WPP20 connect, connect to our PC, use that for the content share to um, throw the image to the front of the room, and then we'd use our MVC byte extender to connect our peripherals to our PC. All right, another thing that I'll quickly touch on here is also our third-party DSP connection. So with a lot of the Yalin kits, we can actually utilize third-party party DSPs rather than using the Yalink mics and speakers that are available. If that is the case, there's a few different connectivity options here that are available. Now, if we're using the AV Hub because we, we're installing a multi-camera system, there's a USB-A port on the AV Hub. So we will then connect USB-A to our USB port on our DSP. And then from the AV Hub, it'll still be USB B port to USB A on the M Core um, Pro. If we were just using the UVC 86, so on the UVC 86, there's a, there's a USB A port on the side of the camera. So if we want to connect our DSP just to a single camera solution utilizing the UVC 86, we can connect our DSP to the UVC A port on the UVC 86, and then we connect the UVC 86 via USB back to our M-Core. Now, another thing I just learned this morning, here going through this and, and preparing this presentation, is it looks like it's now supported on the, on the UVC 84 as well, which I didn't know. So if um, you do want to use a third-party DSP with the UVC 84, same connection as the A86. So via that USB A port on the UVC 84, now, alternatively, what we can do is on that last bottom right image is we can just connect the DSP directly to the PC. Doesn't have to go via the camera or the um, AV hub. Now, one thing to mention in this scenario, if we connect the DSP directly to our PC, if we want to use Biod, we're not going to get audio. So if we want to use a BIOD connection that utilizes the audio from the DSP, we need to make sure the DSP is connected via our AV hub or via the camera. All right. Now we've configured our Teams Room user or license room resource account. We've set up, we've wired all of our devices together. We're now ready to actually run the system up and go through the configuration of um, the Microsoft Teams system. When we first boot up the MVC kit, we're going to have a couple of Windows kind of options that we need to configure here. That's just going to be our time, time zone, our language, our key out, keyboard layout, um, et cetera. So it's like three options, I think it is. Once we've done that, the system will reboot and then boot up directly to our MTR um, application, the Microsoft Teams Room application. So once we first boot it up, this is the screen we're going to get um, in the via that Teams kind of initialization wizard. The first thing we need to do, accept the user license and click on next. Once we do that, we're going to be prompted for our user account and our password. So this is the user account and password that we created at the start of the session in 
Microsoft 365. We put in that username, the password. We select the supported meeting mode. Nine times out of 10 now, it's going to be Microsoft Teams only. There's not a lot of Skype for Business um, users out there anymore. So majority of the time, it will be Teams only. And then we can enable or disable modern, modern auth depending on your um, Microsoft 365 environment. We will then click Next. Now here, normally we won't need to do anything. The main reason we would need to configure this section is if we are using Exchange on-premise rather than Exchange in Office 365. If we're using Exchange on-premise, we may need to configure these advanced options here to um, connect the MTR device to our on-premise Exchange server. If it's Office 365, leave as default. All right, once we've done that, we'll click on Finish. The system is going to reboot. And then once rebooted, if we have everything set up correctly, we'll then be prompted with the home screen and we can then initialize and start our first Teams meeting. Now, before we go further on that, what I'll do now is just run through some of the setup of the Android devices as well. All right, now with the Android based devices, this is a little bit different. So if we're using the CTP 18 with one of our Android um, collab bars, the first thing that we need to do once we've connected both devices to our corporate network, on the CTP 18, we're going to be prompted to enter the IP address of our A10, 20 or 30 device. Now the IP address that the A10, 20 or 30 has will be displayed on the screen. So we enter that IP address into the CTP 18 and then we let it connect. Once it's connected, we can then run through the initial configuration of the um, A20 via the CTP 18. Now, if we're not using a CTP 18, we can use a remote control that comes with the A20, A30, A10, depending on the kit that you buy, or we can plug in a keyboard and mouse into the A10, A20 or A30. Once we've done that, we're going to have to select the language, our time zone, and then we're going to be pre uh, presented with an option to select what UC provider we want to use. Now we have the option of Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or BIOD or device mode. So BIOD device mode is the same thing. Once we select what option we're going to utilize, we will then click on completed. Now, one thing to mention, if you select Microsoft Teams now, doesn't mean you can't ever change to Zoom or to device mode. There's ways of doing it via the settings or via the web interface of these devices. So this is really just your initial configuration and the primary UC provider you're going to use in your organization. All right. In this case, we're looking at Microsoft Teams. So we've selected Microsoft Teams, we've clicked completed, and now it's time to sign in to Microsoft Teams. So there's two different ways that we can do this. We can do it on the device. So we can, from the device, we can use either the CTP 18, a remote control or a keyboard, and we enter the username and password of um, the account that we're signing in. And then um, we do that and the device will then sign into Microsoft Teams. Alternatively, what we can do is we can do it via the web. So we can go to our computer, we go to microsoft.com forward slash device login, and we can then enter the code that is displayed on the device. Once we do that, the system will then automatically sign in based on the credentials that you use on that um, website. Now, a couple of um, QR codes here. So if you do want additional information on the Android devices, on how to pair the devices to the CTPT, CTP18, I should say, um, or also look at um, you know, running through that initial configuration of the Android devices, you can do that by these QR codes. And these will all be available after the session by the video or via a PDF version of the presentation. All right, what I'm going to do now, 
So the advanced configuration of our Windows based systems. Now, if I run through the advanced configuration of the Android as well, then we'll be here all afternoon. So today I'm just going to go through the advanced configuration of our Windows based systems. And I'm going to do that um, via a live demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just switch screens. And I'm going to bring up my team viewer session which gives me access to one of the mtr devices that um, i have here in my office now hopefully you guys can still see this screen okay someone give me a thumbs up or something to let me know that you can see this screen okay yep perfect rob thank you all right so once we've gone through our um, configuration we've come to the home screen of our mtr device what we need to do is we need to make sure everything's configured correctly because by default, when we went through that first initial configuration wizard of this device, as you saw, there was no option for, you know, what peripherals we're using for the device. You know, there was, there was no advanced configuration. So what we need to do is we need to click on more and we go to settings. And now we would enter here our default password. Now the default password for Windows-based Microsoft Teams Rooms is SFB. For Android-based devices, the default password is four zeros. Now, I have changed my default password, so I will enter my password in here and we click on yes. Now, from here, we now have the opportunity to go through the um, advanced configuration of our Microsoft Teams Room on Windows. So from here, we can see the account. This was the account information that we put in during that initial configuration wizard. So nothing needs to be changed here, unless for some reason, when you went through the configuration wizard and when you went back to that home screen, it wasn't signing in, then we can come back here and check that we, we typed in our username and our password correctly. Now, another error that I do see sometimes is that it's not signing into Microsoft Teams, yet the credentials are correct. That may come back to that issue with Microsoft taking up to 24 hours for your license to activate. So if that does happen, be patient and wait for Microsoft to make sure your licenses are all enabled correctly. Now from the advanced section, again, shouldn't need to choose this. All right, from our meeting options here, what we can do is we can enable or disable automatic screen sharing. What does that mean? So what that means is if we're utilizing the WPP20 or we're using our HDMI USB-C connection to our laptop to share content into a meeting or even just a front of room when we're not in a meeting, as soon as we plug in that cable, it's gonna share content automatically, automatically to the screen without actually having to press the share content button. That can be enabled or disabled from here. Now show meeting names. So in some environments, some organizations, when you click on or when you walk into the room, if there's scheduled meetings on the touch panel, you are going to see what that meeting name is. Now, if there is security risks in having that meeting name being displayed on the touch panel, that can also be disabled here as well. And then we also have the option for the room system to automatically leave the meeting once everybody else has left the meeting. Otherwise, what can happen is everybody leaves the meeting that were, that were remote and everybody walks out of the boardroom table, boardroom, um, and no one actually hangs up the call. So the, the system just stays connected to the meeting. So doing this means that the system will automatically drop out of the meeting. Now we can also enable encryption on here as well. And this is also where we enable our third party guest join to Cisco WebEx and also, also to Zoom. So if you are going to use your MTR to join a Zoom meeting or a, Z a Cisco WebEx meeting, make sure these options are enabled, otherwise it will not work. Okay, on the device section, dual monitor mode. By default, this is going to be set to single mode. Uh, it'll be, it'll be, this option will be disabled. 
So make sure if you are using dual monitors and one of your monitors, your screens isn't working, come in here and check this setting. Make sure it's enabled. Now that swap screens um, option here also allows you to, to spot what is displayed on each screen. And then we have Bluetooth beaconing. So this option, which I won't go too deeply into, but basically allows us to walk in on our mobile phone, on a call, walk into a meeting room. The mobile phone will, will find the meeting room via Bluetooth, and we can then switch our call from the phone to the meeting room. By default, this is enabled, but if you want to turn that off, that's via here as well. And if you are having issues with your MTR device, we can enable the feedback here, which will send all the logs back to Microsoft. Coordinated meeting. This can be enabled or disabled from here. By default, it is disabled. Again, I won't go into too much detail, but coordinated meeting, what it does is it allows you to join two devices or two systems to a meeting simultaneously. So if you had coordinate, coordinated meeting um, enabled, and in most use cases, this is used with a Surface Hub. So if you had a Microsoft Teams room and a Microsoft Surface Hub, you can make it so when the Teams room joins a meeting, the Surface Hub automatically joins the meeting as well, and we can use the Surface Hub to share content or whiteboarding, et cetera, into our meeting. Okay, peripherals. So this is where we select what devices we're using for our camera, microphone, and speakers. So from here, we have our option to select what device we will use. Now on the kit that I'm using here today, I'm using the AV Hub. So with the AV Hub, it's gonna be called the Yalink processor for audio and for okay, audio again, and then the camera processor. So when you say that, that is gonna be the AV Hub. If it was the USC 86 or the 84, it will be displayed as the 84 or 86. Now, as you can see, what I touched on earlier is that every option here, so for your mic, for your speaker, and for your camera, is the same device. That's because all of our audio peripherals connect via that camera. Now, if we are using a content camera, so a, a camera such as the UVC30 from Yalink, which is used for the white, magic whiteboard function, we can select the content camera from this option here. Lastly, we can, connect, um, we can select a theme. Um, we can also upload custom themes for our Windows-based MCRs as well. Now, this isn't done here, but this is where you would select to use your custom um, screen or custom background image, I should say. Now, I'm not going to go through the process of doing that, but that does need to be done via the Skype settings XML file. Um, which can be discussed at a later date, or if you do want to know how to do that, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll, I'll let you know. All right, so now once we've gone through the advanced configuration of our MTR device, we can then save and exit, depending on the settings, the system may reboot. All right, what I'm going to do now quickly, I know we're running out of time, there was quite a bit of content to get through. What I'm going to do quickly is touch on the Yalink Room Connect software that's included with um, the Yalink um, Windows kits. So what I'll do is quickly sign into Windows. Now this is installed by default. So by default, this software, once you sign into Windows on your MTR device, this Yalink Room Connect software will be there. All right. So what we'll do is we run the Yalink Room Connect software. This is where we can um, configure advanced features for our camera, um, AV hub, our mics, our speakers. This is where we upgrade firmware for our um, peripherals as well. All of that can be done from this piece of software. Now, also what we can do from this software is we can connect this device to the Yalink YMCS platform. So if we want to manage our device from the YMCS platform, we can click on the settings um, connection, go to the DM server settings, and we can put it in our settings to connect to our YMCS account. Another thing that we can do from here is if we want to use utilize third-party room control. So the supported room controllers at the moment, AMX, QSIS, Xtron, 
if we want to configure our third party room control flip page that we see on the MTR system, this is where we would put the URL to the um, to the web page we've designed for that QSIS external AMX uh, system. Now, another new feature that Yarlink have implemented here is what happens is, so just quickly, what happens is a lot of um, customers, they, they might be installing um, a system into an organization that has specified certain kit. So for one example, I have a, a university that's using Yarlink peripherals, but they use Crestron MTR kits. So they've got the Crestron, PC and touch panel, and they can't change that just due to internal politics. But what we can do now is we can use Yalink peripherals with these um, third party or other vendor PCs. Now, in the beginning, if we did that with a Crestron system, for example, when we clicked on the camera control option in the, in the MTR, it wouldn't load anything. It'd throw an error because it's looking for Crestron devices. So what we've done, what Yelling have done now to work around this is we've enabled this camera control hovering ball. So it's a little option that will appear on the screen of the touch panel, which will give us complete control of the Yelling camera on a third party system. So this is where you would enable or disable that option. Um, another thing we can do here is configure auto update settings for the software. And also there's another option which I haven't really touched on here and that's Roomcast pairing. So what we can do now with the Roomcast is we can connect the Roomcast um, casting device to the HDMI input on our M-Touch panel and we can now share content via Miracast, Chromecast, AirPlay into our meetings utilizing the Roomcast device. So this is where we would pair our Roomcast to our MTR device. All right, now quickly just going through here. So what we can do here is we can configure advanced um, uh, options for our AV hub, for our um, cameras and, and things like that. So from here, we're going to have device settings. You know, we can see all the settings here for our AV hub. So let's move that out of the way. And then we've also got each of the cameras and what we can configure on these cameras as well. So we've got, I've got different names for the cameras because I had them um, pointing at different peripherals in my office. But here we can select what camera we want to configure and then we can configure um, AI features and things like that from here. One thing that we can do with some of these cameras and what we should always do when we first set up a camera in a meeting room space is calibrate the lens. Again, I've had problems in the past with customers where, and just a recent one actually with an A30, where the camera was installed in the meeting room. When they turned on auto framing, it was looking at the roof. Like it was actually tracking the top of, top of people's heads. And the reason for that is because the lens was not calibrated. So make sure we do this when you first install it in your meeting room space. Now from here, again with the UVC 86 being a more advanced camera, we have lots of different options here as well. So we've got different tracking features that we can configure here. Now, one thing to mention is these tracking features can be enabled and disabled on the fly from the MTR software, but there is some advanced features that need to be configured from this software. For example, presenter tracking. How is presenter tracking going to work? Are we using gestures? Are we using just a, um, what's actually called a segment or priority zone? So if we're just using priority zones rather than gestures to trigger that presenter tracking, these options need to be configured from here. Lastly, from this software, updating firmware. So being able to update firmware for all our per peripherals. Now, when you're using a multi-camera solution, and if you're using the same amounts or you're using multiple cameras of the same type, you only need to upgrade or upload the firmware once, and it'll then push that firmware version out to all connected cameras. As you can see from this system here, I've got three UVC84s, which I can just upgrade um, once. 
But then I've also got an 86 as well, which would be a different version of firmware, which I can then upgrade um, individually as well. And also the AV hub can be upgraded. All right, so that's kind of where I'll leave it now for the Room Connect software, but just wanted to touch base on that additional configuration options that are available and making sure that those advanced features are configured correctly for your customers, especially that lens calibration. All right, what I'll do quickly now is I'm going to head back to the presentation. I'm just going to cover one more thing before we finish up. Now, let me quickly get back to the presentation. Oopsie. Sorry, guys, let me just find it again. That one, and all right, hopefully you guys can see that. So what we do now is I'm going to quickly go back here, and we'll go to the, to the final slide. Um, sorry, guys, I have run over time today, but there was... As I said, a lot of content to get through. All right, so when we first get our MTR devices, one of the main things that we should be doing once it's all installed, all running, we should make sure that the Teams application is up to date and also Windows is up to date. Now, with the Windows-based MTR devices, Windows updates are controlled by the Teams Room application. So if you have an early version of the Teams Room application, Windows will only update as far as the Teams Room application allows it to go to. So first thing we need to do, update the MTR application. Now, every night at 2.01 in the morning, your Windows-based MTR is going to go out, connect to the Microsoft website, look for an update to the MTR app. If there's an update, download it and reboot the system. So if you're happy to wait overnight for it to update automatically, you can do that. But if you can't wait and you wanna make sure your system's up to date and running for your customer, we can update the, the Teams application manually. Now to do that, what we need to do is download a Windows PowerShell script from the Microsoft website. So the link is there on the on the screen here. We then save that script to um, a folder on our MTR. We will then run the PowerShell with admin privileges and we'd run the following command on that device. It'll then go and download the MTR app and install it on the PC or on the device. Now, a tip here, if you log into the device, with a Skype user logged out, this script will throw an error. The Skype user needs to remain signed in when you run this script. Best way to do this is when you're on the home screen of your MTR device, so your normal where you show your meetings and join meetings and whatnot, plug a keyboard into your device, hit the Windows key five times, it's going to take you to the login page. Select admin, sign in, that will keep the Skype user signed in. It's not going to sign the Skype user out. Whereas if you go to the Windows settings via the settings option on the MTR, it's going to sign in as admin and sign out the Skype user. So that's a little trick there for when we want to keep that Skype user signed in, but then sign in, in as the administrator as well. So if you do get that error on the screen when running this manual update, That'll be the reason. All right, so again, once we've got it all set up, make sure that Teams Room application has been updated and then run your Windows updates. Once that's done, your system is ready to go for your customer. Now, doing all of this can be a lot of work. You go to your customer's site, you've spent hours installing all the system, now you've got to run through the, you know, the, the rigmarole of updating Windows and things like that. Alloy can do this for you. If you need pre-staging options for your customers, you want to make sure that your techs aren't wasting time out there in the field, sitting and watching Windows updates, 
contact your LO account manager. Make sure you add the option to your quotes and we can do this for you. And it's very affordable. Keep that in mind. It's going to save a lot of time out in the field when you're installing these devices. Same for the Android based systems. We can pre stage those as well. All right, guys, that's the end. Any questions? I know it was a bit of a long session and a lot of information was covered. Um, hopefully, it wasn't too much and it didn't bore you too much. It did go over an hour, so I'm sorry about that. Um, if you do have any questions, fire away. All right, no questions. I'll just give it a couple more minutes just in case you think of anything. But if there's no more questions, we'll finish off. Subject name. So do you mean oh, on the console, so the meeting name you mean? The actual meeting name? Yeah, that, that should be displayed. So if it's not displayed, make sure you go into the to those advanced settings of the MTR and just make sure you are showing those, those meeting names. Make sure it's enabled because the meeting name should appear on the console. initiate from a channel from a channel in teams so is it not so what's appearing is that is a channel name appearing rather than a subject name uh, let me look into that one for you nick not sure off the top of my head i'd have to talk to microsoft and to see how we or if, even if we can change that because because you have initiated it from that channel, yeah, it's probably there's no way to actually enter a, a meeting name because it's just using that channel name instead. But I'll investigate for you, Nick, and let you know. All right, Matthew. So previous webinars can be on our website. Um, so on alloy.com.au under the events section, there's webinars there, and there's a whole bunch of different webinars. There's also um, a lot of lunch and learn sessions that we did last year. I haven't actually got around to doing it this year yet because we've been too busy, but we will at some stage. So lots of different content um, on the lunch and learn section and also the webinar section of the LO website. All right, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just chuck my email address into the chat here. If any of you guys have any questions, feel free to send me an email, hit me up on Teams. Um, happy to help at any, any stage. I don't think so at this stage, Nick. Um, I know for sure the UVC 30 is supported as a content cam camera, but I'm not sure, 100% sure about the UVC 86. Again, I'll double check for you. Nick, if you can send me a, a quick email with those couple of points that I need to follow up for you, um, I'll make sure I get it done. Isaac, that's a, another kind of more teams directed question. Um, but I, I think it's probably possible based on your policies that you've set for your meetings or for that channel. Um, so the question was being able to, so if they initiate a meeting from a channel and there's guest users, um, 
or, or, or users that are not part of their tenant in a meeting, then those users can't access chat. Um, I think it's probably a policy or a, or a setting that can probably be changed. But again, Isaac, if you want to shoot me an email, I'll, I'll look into it for you as well. All right, guys, thank you all very much for your time. Um, just to let you all know that these kind of these three sessions that we've run over the last three weeks will be run again. So we will be running these sessions quite regularly. Um, so if you did miss anything or you want to look at these sessions again, like I said, you can see you can view the recordings and download the presentations from our website, but we will be running them again in the near future as well. All right, all, thank you once again for your time. I appreciate it. I know that I ran over, do apologize. Um, but yeah, thank you all. Enjoy the afternoon and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.